What's up guys, I'm Jeff, and today we're talking nighttime jig fishing for bluefin. Now, I've got three different setups here today, an 80 pound, 100, and 130 pound setup, all pin fathom two speeds, and you'll notice that they are all outfitted with white line. Now, there's a particular reason for that, we'll get into that, but I do have three setups, and they're basically for three different size fish. So, smaller grade fish, smaller jigs, 200 gram, I like to fish the 30 size. This is an 80 pound setup. I have a 100 pound setup for that little bit bigger fish and then also a 130 pound setup. Now you can also do this by having different style jigs. So maybe I want to have a flat fall on this one or a knife jig on this one or a really heavy like heavy 400 gram knife jig on this one. I got different varieties to go to back and forth so in case I want to stop and they don't bite the first one or they don't particularly like it, I can switch back to a different jig really quick. As I mentioned before, all of my line is white. And the reason for that is this is the easiest to see at nighttime. Now, the only way to properly know where your jig is depth wise in the water column is to mark it. So what you can do is buy yourself a cheap line, uh, line counter and a marker and every hundred feet, mark your line. Now I would suggest marking it in at least one foot section. So say 100 feet, you're going to mark constant black or one foot, the 200 mark you can do one foot black, one foot of white line, and then another foot of black line. And that way, as it's going out, you can see where you are in the water column. Typically speaking, depending on the jig and the reel, one second of dropping is close to 10 feet, roughly. So you can kind of put yourself, let's say you're at the 240 mark, you go past the 200 mark, count to four, you know you're pretty close. Now you don't need to be dead on accurate, these fish are moving up and down, but you want to find ideally the spot where they are going to be. Now, when it comes to picking a jig, there's a lot of options out there. And to be honest, it's all personal preference. I've caught fish on pretty much all of them. Um, personally, I think when the fish are smaller, I like to use a smaller, smaller jig like the Dio SK or a flat ball. When the fish are bigger or they're down a little deeper, I like going with more of a, a knife jig style setup. Or, or even something like, like the Taddy as well. Um, but the most important thing is you wanna give it some color. I know it's dark and you know it's dark down there, and it's black. You think the fish can't really see the color. Sometimes they can, sometimes they can't, depending on where your jig is in the water column. But they can see it when it glows. So buy yourself a little UV flashlight on Amazon or some other place like that, six or seven bucks. And this is gonna make your jig glow a lot longer when you throw it down there, then trying to hold it up to the light of the sport boat or your own boat. Uh, a lot of times LED lights don't give off UV light and give it the proper glow. So pick up a little flashlight, keep that in your pocket. Now, when it comes to attaching your jig to your rod, you got a couple different options. You can make yourself some pre-made leaders with a swivel on the end, but these tend to get messed up in your tackle box. Especially if you've got a whole bunch of them, they tend to make a mess. And um, I don't like messes. So what I've made, and that is available in our store is some jig leaders. And what they are is a swivel at the top, a split ring at the bottom, and it allows you to change your jigs quickly uh, without having to have a bunch of leaders made for every single one inside your tackle box. Now, there's a couple other tricks that guys like to do. Some guys like to take their assist hooks and put them directly on the split ring so that way when they change their jigs out, they got two hooks at the top, and that way they only put one hook or two hooks at the bottom. It's all personal preference, to be honest. Um, most of my jigs, I, I fish the standard way. Two at the bottom, such as the Daiwa flat ball. On the longer jigs, such as the Taddy, uh, I, I definitely see the need for split hooks at, at the top. Um, and I like to have one, at least one here on the bottom as well. Um, just allows that fish, if it's going to grab the jig at the top or at the bottom, it's a really long one. Some of these knife jigs are 10, 12 inches long. They allow you to still hook the fish when it grabs the, when it grabs the jig. So here's an example of using a juke leader. What I have here is I'm just going to take the split ring and open up with my pliers, slide my jig on, and just work it around until it's fully connected. And that's pretty much the fastest way that you can connect the jig without having to tie anything. Now the other end that has a swivel, you're going to connect this to your rod already. So the only part you'll be changing it out is on the jig side and you either use a snap swivel or tie it on. Now this is the other way I mentioned. You would connect your assist hooks directly to your split ring and then you'd open up that split ring and connect it to your jig. 
But the problem is sometimes those assist hooks kind of get in the way and it makes it a little bit harder to open. Um, this is one way to do it, just not my personal preference. It's not as fast and just takes a little bit more time, but solely up to you. All right, now when it comes to technique for nighttime jig fishing, there's a couple of methods that work well. The first one is the old school flat fall fishing style where you just put in free spool, you let your jig drop to your desired level and if it doesn't get bit, lock it in gear, reel it back up to the surface, try again, okay? Now, for knife jigs and other jigs, um, like the SK jigs, uh, a technique that I found that works pretty well is knowing, obviously knowing the depth that you're gonna drop to. So start by there, drop to the depth that you want, lock it in gear. And what I do is I whip the jig. And what I mean by that is I lift my rod up really fast so it gets parabolic, just like I, I'm, I'm trying to hook a big fish. And as it does that, my line goes tight, the jig comes up and then it flutters back down as I slowly drop my rod tip back down. Now, the most important thing that you do is slowly drop your rod tip back down. What I mean by that is that you want to have your line slack so your jig still has time to flutter and spin the way that's supposed to work, but also that it's not so loose that it gets wrapped around the, the tip of, of your guide at, uh, at the end of your rod or multiple guides, depending on, on how, how big of a rod you got. Now, the most important thing to do when you do hook a fish is not to lift up. You want to reel as fast as you can and pull all that slack out of your line. So if you happen to come up, it flutters down, it gets bit, reel as fast as you can. Do not keep jigging up. Uh, what you want to do is just get all that slack out of the line. And remember that we're, we're fishing J hooks here. We're not fishing circle hooks. So these things are going to catch on to the first thing that they grip onto. And you want to make sure that you pull all the slack out and when they grip, they go in tight and that you don't lose slack. If you lose slack by jerking your rod up and down when the fish is hooked, it's more than likely gonna come off. So that's it today, guys. If you have any more questions, hit us up in the comments. We'll point you in the right direction. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.